Jai Hind. This is Brigadier Hemant Mahajan, who welcomes you to another important session on national security. The subject which we are going to talk today uh, is going to be the fallouts of Russia Ukraine war, the 22nd day. How has our country managed these fallouts economically, diplomatically, from the point of view of, uh, let's say, uh, uh, other aspects like weapons, etc. We'll talk about that. Uh, also, we will talk about as to what lessons can we learn from these, uh, from this war, because this war is being televised so much, uh, and every day we seeing something happening. Uh, we can definitely draw some important lessons as to what, uh, how uh, we should learn from this war, so that should we fight a war with China, which definitely will be coming in a while, then how can we manage? the chinese challenge better that is what we need to learn more uh, sabse pehle main sabhi logon ko holi ki shubhkamnaye dena chahta hu holi ye hamare desh ka ek important festival hai aur sabhi desh holi mana raha hai to best wishes on the occasion of holi abhi main jis vishay ke upar baat karne wala hu sabse pehle hai jab ye ladai shuru ho gayi when this war started and today the 22nd day uh, some experts tried to say that it is going to create a problem for us uh, and the rates of petrol diesel will increase drastically after the elections if you have heard my analysis i had very clearly said that this will not happen simply because when the government was aware of the problem they had taken multiple measures to reduce the shock as much as possible one Uh, uh, one thing which they undertook was buying things from the spot market spot market is like a wholesale market from where you can buy ships uh, buy oil uh, buy uh, crude etc which has been cancelled by somebody and it is available for a sale secondly we have tried to improve our domestic production thirdly what we have done is we are trying to get the russian crude which is quite cheap fourthly we are working on alternate sources of energy uh, and you know we are going in a big way for using hydrogen as a fuel and hopefully in next few years we will uh, uh, turn out to be the most important supplier of hydrogen which is uh, then that energy is perennial and it doesn't create a problem from the point of view of pollution and it will reduce our dependence on imported crude also we are working on the electrical vehicles so that itself reduces our consumption quite a lot and of course a bit of lucky part now now the petrol uh, now the crude which had gone to nearly 130 uh, dollars per barrel has dropped down to 100 so obviously we will also benefit by this prices so therefore we have managed this energy security part quite well in fact one point which i uh, uh, did not mention is that we have re uh, released some uh, petrol uh, or some stock of oil from our strategic reserve just for your information we have 90 days of consumption available as strategic reserve so some part was released from there so multiple methods it ensured that the energy prices did not rise and we were able to absorb the energy shock much better than most of the nation the next issue is this is a uh, highly televised war there is a western version there is a us version there is a russian version and then there is a indian version now what is true one is not able to find out in the fog of war as to what exactly has happened but two aspects stand out the russians have spent a fair amount of time in carrying out information warfare and psychological warfare did it have an effect on ukraine no it has had very little effect on ukraine's people ukraine's army and ukraine's uh, uh, leadership so that's a lesson for india enemies of india can keep on carrying out psychological operations they can keep on hiring uh, uh, agents who will write something against the country but if the country unites then obviously we can withstand 
any information war from china any propaganda war from pakistan any psychological war which the enemies of the country will do inside the country we must unite and we must have a faith on in our armed forces we must have a faith in ourselves as a nation uh, that is one lesson which we can learn from the ukrainians because it was very clearly said if a nation wants to rise every person in the country must work for the nation then only a nation can become a big superpower the next issue is the information war or the psychological war launched by the western world now western world is showing lot of losses of russia russian uh, uh, not able to uh, progress as fast as they to uh, as they want to be their air force has not done well uh, uh, but their armored uh, uh, tanks and all are there in the war but nothing spectacular has happened uh, now what is the truth here the truth here is that today the russians while they have used the tanks but tanks were not used like tanks meaning the kind of lightning campaigns of second world war the kind of uh, lightning strikes of second world war of generals like general romel general runstein general guderian uh, general manstein etc this has not happened the tanks have been used more like a pill box uh, they are just standing there well they they did go inside and uh, uh, let's say uh, surround few important cities but the surrounding or which is called as isolation and investment in the army parlance hasn't had too much of an effect and city of kiev is yet not ready to uh, fall because the most important issue is that the russian soldiers possibly do not want to enter the cities and get involved into fighting in built up area clearing house by house clearing street by street etc so therefore the fact that is comes out very well is that the americans ran away from afghanistan because they did not want to lose the american soldiers america and most of the western powers have abandoned countries like iran iraq syria etc because they don't want to utilize their own manpower nato did not want to help ukraine physically by sending soldiers simply because uh, uh, nato did not want to or did not want to lose its soldiers now similarly a uh, one lesson that comes out very frequently out is that russia is also not willing to uh, to uh, sacrifice its soldiers so therefore they are only relying more on psychological warfare information wa warfare direct firing weapons uh, guided missiles artillery uh, uh, and those kind of call it stand alone weapons uh, co uh, call it they are using lot of kinetic energy but it is a, a, a non contact kind of a warfare meaning from a distance they are firing and getting over with it so what is the lesson for india the lesson for india is very very clear the spirit of the soldiers can defeat modern technology this is what the ukrainians have done also what we must understand is the tank warfare of the russians has not been of a good order tank which is used for mobility which is used for lightning campaign have not been uh, uh, done at all uh, then there are certain weapons like uh, the drones etc they are supposed to be uh, uh, a weapon system which can win wars but they but in a dense air environment the effect of drones have not been as much as it was in the azerbaijan and armenia war but important issue is yes we should use drones we should use modern tanks the tanks have utility artillery has a utility uh, the guided missiles has its uh, 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 has its own uh, uh, effect in in the beginning part of the war so there is a lot we can learn from the ground action of the russian soldiers but most important is and i have stated this before also that even the chinese will be scared of a physical war just like the russians just like the uh, nato countries just like the americans that is where our human element of war the human element of indian army will be more than match for russia and 
connection for Pakistan and uh, China put together. Unfortunately, there are some strategic analysis uh, analysts in this country who fe who feel that we cannot fight a two front war. I want to make it very very clear to all the strategists that India is more than capable of fighting the Chinese, fighting the Pakistanis together at the same time managing terrorism in Kashmir Valley, managing the left wing extremism in the central part of the country, managing a bit of insurgency which is still prevalent in northeast India. So one need not worry as far as the kinetic war is concerned, as far as the physical war is concerned, we can match our adversaries. There should be no doubt on, uh, 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 on this issue. How about the missiles? Well, missiles did hit the targets which they were meant for. The precision guided missiles were definitely effective in the first part of the war. But uh, uh, especially targets which are very heavily guarded in terms of air effort, etc. So that uh, the, the missile war is something which we can learn a lot from. However, the anti-tank missiles of the Ukrainian army and the anti-aircraft missiles which the Ukrainian army has been supplied by the Western world have proved quite effective. So that's an important lesson for us that uh, uh, against the Chinese, against the Pakistanis, we can use our anti-tank teams our anti-tank missiles, our uh, anti-aircraft missiles in a bigger way. We need to equip a lot more units with anti-tank weapons, anti-tank equipment, uh, uh, anti-aircraft equipment, etc. so that they can be used to trap the Chinese armor, uh, also trapping the uh, Pakistani armor. The next issue is the threat of nuclear weapons. Nuclear weapons uh, is uh, I have been saying it again and again and again that they are a political weapon. Uh, uh, Chinese and Pakistanis do not have the capacity to start any nuclear war while threatening may go on. But the issue remains that we need to keep on modernizing our nuclear weapon system in terms of delivery. Today we have a three tier system for our nuclear delivery, the uh, land based system based upon uh, uh, let's say Akash and Agni is quite good. Our system from the air that is by using the Sukhoi aircraft etc is quite good. Uh, the uh, firing these missiles from a ship we can do a reasonable job. Uh, however, one aspect which we need to improve upon is launching this kind of uh, missiles from underneath the water that is from the submarine especially from a nuclear power submarine. That is one thing which we need to improve upon in the days to come. The next issue is the use of space. Space has been used very extensively. Satellites of all the nations are keeping a watch on uh, the battlefield and almost the transparency of the battlefield is tremendous and people uh, and we can easily make out as to what can happen. Uh, this is an important lesson simply because on the plateau of Tibet where there is no cover available, we can easily pick up the Chinese uh, movement with the help of our satellites and also help from our friendly countries. However, Chinese will find it difficult uh, to uh, when they come inside the Himalayas, when they come, want to come inside our valleys of Arunachal Pradesh or uh, let's say or in Sikkim etc. because there is a fair amount of tree line which is there. So, uh, transparency of battlefield is an important lesson, use of space, etc. Uh, as far as the diplomat balancing is concerned, we have done a good job. We have managed to uh, 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 evacuate our, uh, uh, our students from uh, uh, Ukraine with the help of Russia and Ukraine. We have also managed to convince the Western world that we need to uh, get, uh, let's say, waivers in terms of buying of uh, Russian weapons or buying of crude etc. So we have done a reasonable job. The most important lesson that India should learn from this particular war is Atma Nirbhar Bharat. Of course, we are spending a fair amount of time and effort to ensure that we reduce our dependence on the Russian weapons. 
at one point of time it was 70 percent now it is dropped down to less than 50 percent and possibly in next three to five years it will drop down to less than 10 percent atmanirbhar bharat making uh, 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 building weapon systems uh, uh, etc in india with the help of our private industry larsen and tobro bharat forge etc we must uh, speed up this issue because Atmanirbhar Bharat is the only solution in an all-out war because enemies otherwise may uh, stop us, uh, may uh, 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 carry out some kind of a naval blockade or something by which they can stop our weapon systems from coming from outside. So Atmanirbhar Bharat is a very important issue. Now uh, before I end, I would like to tell you that today is the 22nd day. A lot of uh, the Indian Army has been following the course of battle uh, regularly, and there are uh, there are many uh, retired uh, uh, Indian Army officers who are offering some worthwhile comments. Leave aside an odd person uh, who will speak uh, uh, the, the language uh, of let's say China uh, or something, but most of the analysis that is coming out in the media by our uh, uh, retired community is of a high quality and I am sure this will help us to analyze this war in a better manner so that we can actually find out as to what happened in the war and learn better lessons from there. But definitely this war is a big learning as far as the Indian Army is concerned. I will stop here. If you like the video, like it and share it with as many people as possible. We will meet again on Monday. That time is Shiva Jayanti, Chhatrapati Shivaji Maharaja's Jayanti. So we will talk about Chhatrapati Shivaji Maharaj, Ganimi Kava. How is it relevant even in today's context? Thank you very much and wishing you happy Holi once again. Jai Hind.